everyone. Welcome, welcome. It, ooh, it felt like winter this morning. It's warmed up a little bit now, but this morning, it felt like winter. Would anybody that's way back there mind coming a little bit more forward? That would be really awesome if you were to do that. I would really appreciate that. Is there anybody here that's here for the very first time? Welcome. Oh, like, now look at, he's like, and then they made me move up to the front of the room, and then they singled me out and said hi to me, and then everybody clapped. <laughs> so we do welcome you. Uh, my name is Reverend Dusty Ripplemeyer, and I am the spiritual director of this amazing community. We are part of a large organization called Centers for Spiritual Living. I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit today. But we um, teach and practice the teachings of Ernest Holmes. It's a new thought community. So we think some new thoughts. We're not stuck in the old thoughts, the old thoughts about God, the old thoughts about religion, the old thoughts about being a sinner or heaven and hell. We have a different idea, a different thought about that. We believe that there is one God and that that God is benevolent, loving, everywhere at all times, within us and surrounding us, and that we are connected to it in ways that can never be broken. And through that connection, we're connected to each other. And today, we're going to really talk a lot about, about all of that. So welcome, and also welcome to those of you that have allowed us to come into your homes this morning through Facebook Live. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your being here. So uh, the reading for today is from Kofi Annan. He says, we have many different religions, different colored skin, but we all belong to one human race. Indeed. Hi. Welcome to those of you who have just arrived in the sanctuary. The theme for the month of October is We Are All Connected. My talk title today is We Belong to One Another. We belong to one another. What the heck does that mean, anyway? <laughs> to really look at the statement, we have to begin with what it means to belong. In the English language, the word belonging has two meanings. One, to indicate an emotional sense of identification with a place or a group of people, and the other, to suggest possession. So on one hand, a person who belongs is deemed to be the possession of a place, a group of people, or an institution. That is not what we are talking about today. We are all autonomous and do not nor should not ever belong to someone else. On the other hand, a person who belongs has a great deal of affection for identification with or connection to a person or a place. That is what we are talking about. Belonging is the innate human desire to be a part of something greater than ourselves. It is a primal, fundamental need, much like our need for food or for shelter. A sense of belonging is crucial to a person's well-being. It improves our health, our happiness, and our motivation. As we see our lives through our connection with others, we recognize that Everyone experiences struggles. Everyone has some difficult times in their lives. We recognize that we are not alone in this human experience, and in that, there is comfort. Belonging can be rooted in many different experiences, such as a place, a person, a relationship, a vocation, an art, a culture, or a spiritual center. 
It can be rooted in a family or a community or a state or a nation. In its simplest form, belonging is like belonging to a gym, which means we get to use their facilities. <laughs> or perhaps belonging to a particular health care group, which means that we can be seen by their doctors or admitted into their hospitals. But I believe that there's so much more to this idea of belonging, <coughs> deeper connection, a deeper experience. It's not just about getting something, but it's about feeling something, about experiencing something. When I feel a sense of belonging, I feel seen and heard and accepted. I know that people know who I am and that they care about me and that I'm loved. Yet I also know that this is not always everybody else's experience of belonging. Some of us belong in a family in which we do not feel very connected. Some of us may be a part of a team at work in which we don't really feel completely accepted by everybody else on that team. On the human plane, we can often have ideas or beliefs or judgments that can interfere with our sense of belonging, create resistance to feeling like we are a part of something greater than ourselves. In order to really create a sense of belonging, we really need to be willing to take a look at our ideas, at our thoughts, and at our judgments. In order to really feel accepted, we need to work on our acceptance of everybody else. The invitation is to look for all of the ways in which we are truly one with each other, all of the ways that we're alike, rather than focusing on all of the ways that we are different. And when we do turn our attention to those differences, the, the suggestion is to turn our attention through respect and honor and placing value on those differences. The invitation is to say yes to opportunities to be with people and then to throw ourselves fully into whatever activity is happening. To really open our hearts and our minds to new adventures and to new people. Another issue around this idea of belonging is described by Brene Brown in her book, The Gifts of Imperfection. She says, our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. Let me repeat that. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. So the invitation is to begin to make peace with ourselves, to find a way to accept who we are with all of our strengths and all of our, our weaknesses, to know that wholeness is about holding it all gently and without condemnation. When a sense of belonging exists within us for ourselves, then that consciousness will call unto itself that same sense of belonging into the experience of our lives. But it has to start within us. On a spiritual plane, the truth is that we have often forgotten that even when we're utterly alone, that we're connected to one another by something greater than group membership, politics, or ideology. We are connected by love. We are connected by love, no matter how separated we think we are by our human physical bodies or by what we think or what we believe, we are one. We belong to one another in ways that can never be broken. We are all part of one invisible whole. But our belonging is ultimately in God. Our belonging 
is ultimately in God. And according to Ernest Holmes, to learn this is the secret of the ages. The fundamental truth that we live in a world where we all belong to one another fits our teaching to perfection because we believe in the unity of all life. That there is only one life, whether it is human, animal, plant, or mineral. That there is only one thing, as Marianne said, one thing that is ever happening. One God, one life, one love, one race, one spiritual family. This oneness is a force in consciousness that transcends all cultures, all ideologies, all religions, all classes, and all national barriers or boundaries and any other possible division that we could possibly make up. It transcends all of it. The root the root of all war, all suffering, all divisiveness, all fear, and all conflict is a sense of separation. This is not only true in our teaching, but for many faith traditions throughout time. This division, that distance between us, that doesn't even really exist, but that division is the source of all strife that exists between individuals, in families, in cultures, in religions, and between nations. The fundamental solution to all human problems and suffering is a state of oneness. I read this story. It was about an orangutan. One day, the zookeeper noticed that the orangutan was reading a couple of different books. <laughs> Anything is possible. <laughs> One was the Bible, and the other was Darwin's origin of species. Surprised, the zookeeper asked the orangutan, why are you reading both of these books? Well, said the orangutan, I just wanted to know if I was my brother's keeper or my keeper's brother. Uh. <laughs> I only read it. <laughs> Fundamentally, both are true. We are connected. We belong to one another because of our oneness, our spiritual DNA, the orangutan is the keeper's brother. Because of this awareness, we have a responsibility to be in conscious connection with all of life in our thoughts, with our words, and through our deeds. The orangutan is the brother's keeper. We belong to one another, and because that is true, the question that arises within me today is, what does that ask of us? Brene Brown says, we, we're in spiritual crisis. The key to building a true belonging practice is maintaining our belief in inextricable human connection. That connection... The spirit that flows between us and every other human in the world is not something that can be broken. However, our belief in the connection is constantly tested and repeatedly severed. So the first thing that we're being asked to do is to remember to remember that God is all that there is. That oneness is the truth of life itself. That we are one with the universe, one with the planet, one with all living beings, one with God. When we remember this, 
and we live our lives from that awareness, then we experience personal, individual transformation. And when each of us transforms, that transformation leads to global transformation. It is as simple as that. <laughs> Ernest Holmes says, treat and move your feet. By treat, he means prayer. The way that we pray here, Centers for Spiritual Living, is called spiritual mind treatment. Within this type of prayer, we first recognize the eternal, omnipresent power and presence that is back of everything that there is. We then align ourselves with this power and presence, recognizing that it created each of us out of itself. Spark of the divine, a spark of God that is within us, and when we align with it, anything, anything and everything is possible. An amen or anything? Yes. All right, thank you. Anything. anything. Being, being our brother's keeper doesn't mean that we keep their problem, their struggles, or their fear. Instead, we, what we can do is to know the truth for them when they can't. We can know and reveal the truth whether we are knowing it for one other individual, for a group of people, for a community, for an entire nation, or for the entire planet. We can begin by knowing this truth and then praying these prayers. And then we can and should move our feet. <coughs> we can and should take action. The invitation, however, is to take that action from a deep and abiding awareness of our oneness. Reverend Ken Gordon, the spiritual director of Centers for Spiritual Living, posted a letter on our minister's listserv. He said, every time we are faced with a global or natural crisis, we have the opportunity to hear the call of love and life. In these times of political divisiveness, closing borders and social violence, whether between nations or within a country, or when disaster strikes, we are all affected. Let us once again take this as an opportunity to affirm our oneness as a human family. Let us declare our commitment to love and support one another. Let us allow our common humanity to reach across the divides as we find powerful and creative ways to help those in harm's way. Today, Centers for Spiritual Living calls every one of us to see beyond our own lives and become aware of the interconnectedness of all of life. We are called to reach out, not close down. We are called to love, not separate. We are called to act, not see. Like the butterfly effect, we realize that what happens anywhere around the globe affects us all. This call begins as an inside job, and then it moves into action. It begins as an inside job, and then it moves into action. But what is that action? As I was thinking about this question, I, I recognize that much is already being done on many different levels for each of us, for our community, and then through each of us, individually and collectively, out into the world. Actions that we might not even recognize are participating in the healing of the world. Our vision of a world that works for everyone is supported by what we call the mothership, Centers for Spiritual Living, not only in their consciousness and in their prayers, but in their actions. They create and 
maintain comprehensive ministerial and practitioner training. They encourage each and every minister and practitioner to be all that they can be. And then they support all of the practitioners and ministers as they powerfully step into their centers, into their teaching chapters, and into their special focus ministries. They provide workshops for ongoing learning and retreats for ongoing deepening. They create and maintain spiritual classes that the center, that the membership centers of which we are one of them can teach. They reevaluate them over and over again and they update when they're necessary. They provide monthly themes and provide a place in which we can share our, vis our wisdom with each other. Now, while much of this work is behind the scenes, their actions allow all of the member communities to do their work out in the world. We are our brother's keeper. Here at the Triangle Center for Spiritual Living, we provide Sunday and Wednesday services that assist in personal and global transformation. We provide spiritual classes that allow each participant to expand their awareness of the truth and to deepen their consciousness of oneness. We teach practical tools to bring that truth and that consciousness powerfully out into the world. We teach spiritual practices such as meditation, prayer, visionings, uh, sacred service and tithing that support our spiritual growth and unfoldment. We provide opportunities for coming together as a community to meditate, to play together, to share our struggles and our wisdom, to break bread and to sing and dance without reservation. All of this supports our individual and collective inner work and reflects who we are out in the world. Out in the world, we've been taking action too. A year and a half ago, we began an outreach ministry. Now, over these months, we have collected th thousands of pounds of food, pet supplies, clothing, backpacks and supplies, and necessary life items to assist people in need. We have built fences, cleared brush, spread mulch, and cut down branches so that others could do their spiritual work in the world. <coughs> Yesterday, for the first time ever, we supported the LBGT community with our presence at the booth at the Gay Pride Parade and Festival in Raleigh. Later this month, as we said in the announcements, we will support the peace movement by staffing a booth at the State Fair, taking talking about peace and sharing our peace statement, our commitment to peace on the planet. We are our brother's keepers. Individually, we've all taken action, whether we recognize it or not. Every time we take a class or come to a service and allow a shift to happen within us, we are taking action. Every time we take that shift out into the world, we are taking action. Every time we choose peace over anger, love over fear, abundance over lack, and oneness over separation, we are taking action every time we remain open and available for spirit to move through and as us, we are taking action. Every time we show up as peace, as compassion, as love, as joy, of wholeness, we are taking action. Every time we reach out a hand, share a smile, or wrap somebody up in a hug, we are taking action. 
every time we are willing to give of our time, talent, and treasure in support of each other, our community, or the world, we are taking action. It is imperative that we recognize the importance, the significance of our state of consciousness. It begins there. It begins as an inside job and then moves into action. Now, while I know this to be the truth, I also know that there are those of us that feel called to do more, to do more in a more visible, more tangible way. That there are those that hear the world's needs knocking on the door of their consciousness in a way that asks them to do something more in form. So the invitation is to listen for that knock, to answer that knock, and to do whatever it is that we are being asked to do. To know that as we get quiet, we will be guided by spirit. That as we answer that knock, that the universe will provide for us all that we need to do what it is that we have to do. To be willing to be for something and against nothing and to take action from that consciousness. Stop merely complaining and become willing to invest our time, talent, and treasure in support and service to the world. To be willing to reach out to others who believe as we do and will partner with us to powerfully bring healing to everything and everyone. This community, the ministers, the practitioners, the leadership, and the members are that group of like-minded people who are ready and willing to stand up and take conscious action. We truly do belong to one another, not just our families or our tribes, or our communities, but the entire world. Everything and everyone in it. We are, like the orangutan, our brother's keepers and our keeper's brother. We belong to one another. And so it is. So it is. Thank you, everyone. I invite you to turn within. As I do so, I am acutely aware of the power and presence of God that is within me and surrounding me. I know that it is eternal, benevolent, always ready, willing, and able to give me the kingdom of heaven on earth. I know that I am connected to it in ways that can never be broken, that it created me out of itself, that right where I am is a hologram of it in its fullness, in its wholeness. And just as I know that this is my truth, I know that it is absolutely so for each and every person here this morning, each and every person watching on Facebook Live. We all are unique, individualized expressions of God. And it is from that place of unity, that place of wholeness, that I speak these words about and for each of us today. Truly knowing that God, that love is all that there is that through this golden thread of God's stuff that weaves itself throughout all of life, we are connected. We belong to one another. And that is a joy. 
that is a wonderful thing. I claim ease and grace for us around living from our awareness of oneness, knowing that as we do so, we transform not only our own lives, but the lives of every single person on the planet. That there is a way in which we can honor each other, our likenesses and our uniqueness. To hold all of it, whether within ourselves or outside of ourselves gently, with respect, with honor, and by placing value on each and every manifestation of God. We are one. One God, one life, one love, one spiritual family. And I'm so grateful to know this truth and to speak these words. So for the power of prayer, knowing that these words are loosed into a law that only ever says yes, that they are clothed in form even as they are spoken. And so I speak them and I release them, letting go and letting God be God. And I invite each of us to anchor this prayer for ourselves and for each other simply by saying, and so it is. Amen.